Hi, this is Brent. I'm the Aquifer Protection Supervisor at the Edwards Aquifer Authority here in San Antonio, Texas. And I'm here today to talk about, you guessed it, aquifers. So a lot of people think of an aquifer as an underground river or a big huge underground lake. And that's not quite how aquifers work. Aquifers are an underground layer of rock that is filled with water that humans can use. The water is stored in the tiny pore spaces, or the matrix, between in the rock. So I'm going to use the Edwards Aquifer as a, a great example. The Edwards Aquifer is a karst aquifer, so we do have conduits, we have cave systems, and sinkholes in, in the aquifer. But most of the water is still stored in the tiny pore spaces of the rock, like all aquifers. This aquifer has three different hydrologic zones. We have our contributing zone, our recharge zone, and our artesian or confined zone. It's important to note that some aquifers are totally confined throughout the entire system, while others are unconfined, that which, which means the permeable rock is at the surface. Uh, the Edwards is both confined and unconfined. So it's unconfined in the recharge zone, and it's confined in the artesian zone. And that'll, that'll play into it in a, in a second. But first, let's look at the contributing zone. So the contributing zone is the large area upgrading of an aquifer higher elevation where water feeds down to the system. It goes through rivers, creeks, small springs. All of that water together flows over the recharge zone and infiltrates into the aquifer. As soon as you have that permeable porous rock at the surface, guess what? That water is able to sink down through there and infiltrate into the groundwater supply. So to show you that visually, I'm going to add some blue dye just onto the contributing zone and the recharge zone to show you what a rain event would look like. So there you can see the water reaches the recharge zone, goes underground, and flows through the system. The Edwards Aquifer has artesian springs. These are springs that are under pressure, and you can see the water flowing up and out of the springs. So, just as water can get in the aquifer, so too can contaminants of any kind. I'd like to show you a few examples of different contaminants getting into the system. So right here, this thing says UST on it. That's an underground storage tank. So think of a gas station or any kind of underground tank that's big and holds a lot of chemicals or, or fuel. And I'm going to add some diesel fuel here to our underground tank. And just like the water got in, this leaking tank is causing this contaminant to get into the system as well. And that's flowing through the entire aquifer and ultimately out at our springs and also out at the wells that we use to drink out of. So that's why we're really cautious about these tanks on the aquifer. Here in San Antonio, we require these tanks to have um, secondary and in some cases even tertiary containment. That means these tanks have triple protection in case there's a leak. And another example, we can take a look at a natural feature like a cave or a sinkhole. A sinkhole is basically a, a collapsed cave or a vertical cave into the limestone. And historically, a lot of folks would put garbage in these because it was a hole in the ground. It was a convenient way to get rid of trash. Well, the problem is when you do that, when you put a bunch of trash onto or inside of a sinkhole, that garbage starts to leach down into the aquifer. And just like we saw with the leaking tank, same problem. It moves throughout the system, it gets pumped out through the wells, and it contaminates the water. Now aquifers do have some ability to filtrate the water. They, if the water is moving through tiny spaces really slowly, it's going to have a lot of filtration. But here in the Edwards, we have a car system again. The water moves quite a bit faster and it's moving through bigger and bigger spaces in some cases, and sometimes there isn't a lot of filtration. So we have to be really careful about protecting it. I wanna talk about these wells. We have these water wells that we all drink out of and we get water from. And I'll put some dye over here in the artesian zone. So the confined area, we have a leaking tank. If you focus on well number six here, you'll notice it's a bit different than all these other wells. It's got a broken casing, so the PVC or steel pipe that protects uh, water from not getting in where it shouldn't. And it's open at the surface. Well, you can see this 
this contaminant is leaking through the surface. And there it goes, down that abandoned well and into the aquifer, just like over here in the recharge zone. So sometimes we think that confined aquifers are protected because there's impermeable rock above them. Well, the problem is that's not always true. These contaminants can still find their way down through an abandoned well or other feature. So just because we're on the artesian zone doesn't mean we, we don't need to be vigilant about protecting the system. And you can see here it's also getting into our springs. Now these springs are very important to all aquifers. That's where a lot of folks get their water. Here in Texas, these springs have been home to humans for thousands of years, and they're also home to several federally endangered species. So these animals and plants are not found anywhere else on Earth. They're not even found anywhere else in Texas, only in this system. So it's important not only to protect um, what's going into the aquifer, but protecting how much we take out of it. That's why we're so big on water conservation, because if it stops raining, Guess what? The water levels decline, they drop in all of our wells, and they drop at the springs. So if we're still using a ton of water and we're not getting any inflows, the water levels are going to drop, our wells and springs could go dry. And that's why we're so careful about how much water we use. We definitely uh, tell everyone to conserve as much as possible because this system is very vulnerable to not only contamination, but also to pressure uh, from drought. I hope you enjoyed the video today about aquifers. If you want to find out more, visit our website, www.edwardsaquifer.org, and comment below if you like the video.